Good morning, Kyle. Good morning, and happy May 10th. Happy May 10th. Today is the Monday after Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. But I want to take a minute to say a couple things. First of all, let's remember the people who are not mothers. For many years, I was not a mother. Uh, as you know, Kyle, I have three adoptive kids. And for years, I wished I was a mother. There are many people out there who are not mothers who choose not to be mothers. And um, all of that is just great stuff. And uh, we don't want anybody to feel left out. But the other thing I want to mention is, uh, for those of you who watch our show, you may know that Kyle's mother, Janice, was one of the top real estate agents in Chicago when she was with us. And I know Kyle misses her very much and thinks of her on Mother's Day yesterday. And I, too, have lost my mother. So to all of you who are missing your mothers, we want to do a shout out and uh, honor all of those wonderful mothers who came before us. So I just had Thank to say you. that. Somebody said something nice where you... Um which I really liked was honoring the people also who mentor you. And I have a lot oh. of mentors, many of whom women, and one of whom is you a little bit, Anne Rasley. So oh, happy nice. Mother's Day and happy Mother's Day. Oh, that's mentor a lovely thing. Yeah, yeah. That's a lovely way it's, to think about it. I love it. All right, well, let's start our show. All right, here we are, ready to start our show. We got a lot so, going this week. We've got yes. stats, we've got cool properties, and we have a new segment called Pro Tips or Ask the Expert. Well, you'll see. Yeah. So let's we start with. Would, yeah. No, I was just going to say we thought we would really give everybody the inside scoop on stuff maybe realtors know about that you might not know about. And we want to bring you into the loop. So. All yeah. right, let's start with stats. What do you got? Okay. Well, as you know, let me see if I can find them here. Ha <laughs> Here we go. I had such a pretty front page, I couldn't find it at first. Um, Ooh. This is the first time uh, we've been able to do April stats. Isn't that a pretty picture? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, that must be a drone because there's no building right there. That's beautiful. Isn't that cool? All right, so here's the news. This is a Chicago. We've been talking and talking about how supply is dwindling, meaning there aren't enough homes for people who want to buy them. And there's less than two months supply in all of Chicago right now through April. If you look at it by neighborhood, you can see that here like almost none is Avondale. And that's that area that is predominantly single family homes just north of Logan Square. And that may be one of the lowest. They've got one month worth of inventory. Um, and then North Center is the highest of these with a 1.4 month worth of inventory. There's just nothing out there to buy right now. People, people, sell, sell, sell. We need you to sell. All right, supply of condos. I wanted to give you an update here. Remember, the Loop and Near North have been lagging behind with higher inventories. Um, this has been ever since COVID of last year, but it's getting better. As you can see, the loop now has only 10 months worth of inventory. Near North has 9.7. And uh, you know what? It's coming down. See that? I mean, look how we were high up here. We're coming down. There was, we're there, was a, there was a great article in today and Sunday's Tribune real estate section about yeah. um, the fact that condo there are more condos than single family homes and how that is a real opportunity for yeah. uh, buyers because condos will come back and condos usually are the ones that have um that drive the market so right. to be able to get a condo a, and a condo that you like because there's a there's a lot on the market um at a good price opportunity and in great rates what an opportunity so right and you know, a couple other things to think about, Kyle. Uh, I was out this weekend and it looked like we were back with the amount of traffic, the number of people walking Michigan Avenue, walking in the parks. 
it feels like it's coming back. We had fireworks on Saturday night for the first time in a year, which was sensational. I can't wait till they put Buckingham Fountain on, but um, you make an amazing point. And then the other thing is this, you know, these condos are gonna come back, but condos are an amazing investment opportunity. Don't just think of like a single family or a multi-unit. And the beauty of a condo as an investment is you don't have to worry about the exterior because you're paying an assessment. You know what I mean? So it's a real turnkey investment for people who want to invest in property, but are a little skittish. So you're exactly right. There are some magnificent, in fact, uh, I just listed one at 525 Halstead for 295. Wow. A condo. Yeah. Across the street from the blue line stop. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a thousand square feet. I'll show you a picture of it later, but thank you for making that point. That's a very important point. All right, 12 month sales through April with condos. And these are again by neighborhood. And, and we don't have to look at the numbers so much as to look at the trends. So in the orange is Lakeview, look how we dipped a little last year. Now this includes post COVID remember, cause this is uh, May through April of 2021 here. If you look at the near north side, you can see we're coming oh, wait, back. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry, 2021 includes May through April. So it's looking back a year. So, okay, got it. From this moment, yes. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, rolling 12 months. Got it. Not a year to date, but rolling 12 months. Okay, and uh, look at the loop. Dip down, but it's Ooh. roaring back too. So. So here's the thing, we've got a lot on the market right now, but the sales are coming back and it's looking great. Median sales price of condos. Up, up, uh, up. Up, 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 yeah, absolutely. So here's West Town up, here's Lincoln Park up, here's Lakeview up, and here's Loop, Loop is steady. And even a tad up, how about that? Part of the reason the Loop is up is we had a bunch of closings at St. Regis this month. So that's helping that number come up, but nonetheless, it's doing it. Okay, uh, volume. This and just to remind everyone, just quickly, St. Regis is the um, the former Vista Tower that the very, very tall three building building um, that's gonna have, that has units up to $10 million. And so that's what's sort of right. driving the increase. Okay, go ahead. Yep, exactly right. So this is dollar sales volume. Again, rolling 12 months up until May 1. Uh, so near north side, volume is down. Mm -hmm. not, not a big surprise, but you know, again, that's the opportunity. If you look at West Town, not a surprise. That's the purplish up, yeah. up, up. Uh, and then Lakeview took a little bit of a hit last year, uh, year before, but this year it's up. Way up. And then the loop again. Oh, excuse me. Lincoln Park, blue That's is Lincoln, Lincoln Park. Park. And you know what, these are single families, but but it's total dollars. Okay, anyway, the point is we're healthy. Yes. Median sales price of single family homes. Okay. So let's start with the near north, single families. That includes your neighborhood, that beautiful Gold Coast where those single family homes are $3 million. So uh, they've taken a little bit of a dip, but you know what? you know this, like I know this, there aren't that many that sell each year. So right. I don't know that this is as indicative of a trend as just kind of what's happening in the year that, you know, people decide to sell one particular property. Yes. Uh, in Lincoln Park, uh, a little bit of a dip and up. So the median sales price, can you read that? A million six. A million six. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the median sales price of a single family in Lincoln Park. If you look at Lakeview, a million four, a little down a million four you know it's pretty steady in lakeview and west down steady as well and that's yeah. it that's what i've got for statistics you know statistics can tell you anything you want to know but yeah. um i just uh in general we don't have enough properties on the market so if you're thinking of selling do it if you're thinking about investing now is a good time to do it in the right properties so and in the right there you go yeah. Well, here's the thing. There's a um, this is a the the lack of inventory is playing out all over the country. Um, NPR's one A that plays on our local um, station at 10 a.m. and at I think nine o'clock p.m. 
is going to do a whole show on how desperate things are around the country. I have um, a, a friend who's buying in South Carolina and she's outbid, it's, it's, it's chaos for buyers trying to buy because um, how few properties there are and how many buyers that are looking. So it's, it's, you know, a lot of people think, oh, this is being ginned up by the real estate brokers. This, no, people want to move. Yeah. And, um, and there's not enough property on the market. And it's, and it's, it's becoming a real problem. Not enough has been built in the last few years, um, especially single family homes. And just there's just not enough in the market. So, well, and I think part of it is too there are jam ups because people want to sell, but unless they have a place to land, they don't want to go on the market. And that's why they need us to help them make yeah. that maneuver. Maybe, you know, call some people and say, hey, if I brought you somebody, would you sell? That kind of thing. So, yeah. So it's tricky. And um, remember, we had uh, Carol Ann Bosarth on who talks about ways, if you are worried about where do I go, bridge loans, mm -hmm. things you can do, places you can go. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, we haven't got our names back. Hello. <laughs> there we go. Um, so anyway, right. just, yeah. So we jump to our, to our new segment on um, pro tips. Okay. This or is going to be totally off the cuff conversation, everybody. This is Absolutely. not a free presentation, so buckle no. up. Buckle so, up. so one of the things that um, a slow market can do is make a um, seller frustrated, and what a hot market can do for a buyer is make a buyer frustrated, sometimes with their agents. So, Anne, if somebody asks you, "How do I change agents?" What do you say? Okay. Uh, well, you know what? It can still happen in a hot market too, because what if you're in a hot market, you're in the market today and you're not selling. You might be like, everybody's selling around me. So uh, typically uh, listing agreements uh, are one year agreements and uh, selling is a very emotional thing. So our clients feel very tied to us. Um, I've had people come to me and say, I am so not happy with who I am, am listed with, and I really want to make a change, but I'm involved in this agreement. A couple things to know. Number one, the agreement is not between you and that agent. The listing agreement is between you and the broker. So my clients, when they sign a listing agreement, they note that I'm the designated agent, but they're actually listing with Baird and Warner. So if if somebody's with another company and another agent and they're unhappy, yes, it's a situation with the agent, but it's also a situation with the broker. So it is a legal contract. There are, however, ways that you can get out of it if you try. <laughs> um, if somebody came to me, which they don't, but if they did, and they said, I am just really not happy, things are not going well. I really feel like I need to make a change. Um, I'd let them out. I don't want anybody listening with me. And I think there are a lot of brokers out there who feel the same way, don't you? I do. And, and that's the nice thing um, about Baird and Warner. They're not going to hold on to you if you're unhappy. It's not right. in their in They might offer you a different agent, but if you're unhappy and you just don't like the whole situation, they want you to be successful. We all want want our buyers and sellers to be successful. So, right. Yeah. So now there are other ways. Yeah. Uh, so if somebody came to me and said, you know, I'm not happy. One of the things I would say to them is this. If you're still in the middle of your agreement with that other company and you would like to make a change, first of all, speak to the agent and just say you're unhappy. If they don't let you out, talk to the broker and the broker may let you out, or as you said, Kyle, they may bring on another agent within that company who might help. Uh, the other thing that you can do that I have done is I have given a referral fee to that first agent. It's a way to mollify them and cover the expenses and their time. And so uh, they'll release the listing to me. 
so that I can give it fresh eyes and do what I need to do. And, you know, if that's what it takes to make my new client happy and to get them out of a situation, um, I'm happy to do that. And there's some people who are conflict avoidant. Sometimes I am too. If you don't want to talk to the agent because you feel like either I've already talked to them and they just don't get it and I don't want to get in a fight with somebody, just go to the managing broker. The managing broker, right. this is part of their job. So, right. and they're on the agreement, just call them up and say, this is what's going on and explain it. And that managing broker, if he or she is a good managing broker, will help you solve the problem. So that's exactly just, right. yeah. Um, now, sometimes if you're a buyer, um, I don't do this, but some buyers agents have you sign an exclusive buying agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, is sort of the same as an exclusive selling agreement. Um, and so you sort of, you have to, again, do the same thing, go to the managing broker, ask to be released. But if you haven't signed one of those, call up somebody who, um, either one of us or a broker you know, trust and respect. You can call us. Uh, and, and, and shift. You don't have to stay with your broker, your buying right. broker, if they're not doing the job for you. Right. That being said, I just want to make one comment about we typically don't have our buyers sign exclusive agreements. However, uh, we spend an, a ton of time looking for the right properties for our buyers. And so, you know, if somebody wants to look around and not be loyal to me, I'd rather they work with somebody else. But um, anyway. Yeah. But here's That's another funny. thing. So sometimes if you're unhappy, um, consider why you want to change brokers. Is it them? Are they not communicating? Are they not doing the marketing that they said they would do? Are they making mistakes? Which, you know, gosh, if they're making all these mistakes, that really erodes trust. Mm -hmm. Consider, is it your home? Did you do the home prep as recommended? Right. And did you price it? Where, they, where your agent recommended you price it. Because even a superstar, even Ann Rossley, can't sell your home if it's priced wrong. And then third, consider, is it the market? Um, for example, if you're in the loop right now, there's a lot of inventory for people to choose. And the fact that yours isn't selling means, A, the market is saturated with a lot of properties and and yours mm -hmm. has to stand out to be one of the ones that is absorbed first or um you know take a look at what's or have your agent tell, tell you what's going on with the comparable properties if they're selling or they're not selling well then there's something going on in the market so i just want i wanted to throw those out oh, that's all good that's all good okay so kyle here's another one an inside tip both you and I have had people say to us, well, I feel like I really need to list with the broker who does the most business in my neighborhood or in my building. And they use that as an objection potentially of listing with us or somebody thinking that, oh my gosh, if they do all the business in the building then, or the neighborhood, then I must list with them. They must be wonderful. Well, they don't say they must be wonderful, but they're like, oh, I should really list with them. So tell me about that. Do you really need to list with the broker of the neighborhood? Well, you know, it, I'm going to lay out some pros of, of listing with that person. And sometimes, you know, Ann is that person, Ann is the um, neighborhood broker, and sometimes I am the neighborhood broker. And there are pros to that. Um, they're deeply knowledgeable about the area. They may live in it themselves. You know, in your building, in my building, we are deeply knowledgeable. They spend time developing uh, relationships in the neighborhood so they know what's going on. They've, you know, talked to the aldermen. They know what's coming. They can give you a lot of scoop. And they may know of people who have lost out on contracts. You know, we're in this really tough um, market in some neighborhoods right now who are frustrated buyers who they can go to if your property comes up, becomes available, they can call those people or those agents with those people and say, if your people haven't bought, I got something that your people might like. So that's that's a pro, those are pros. But the cons, right. one, um, sometimes 
familiar, you've heard this, familiarity breeds contempt. You know how it's done, you know, you do the same old thing, you figure it's gonna work. And um, marketing preferences change. Sometimes a fresh approach gets you ahead. And thinking about problems with a fresh approach, and you do this all the time, when you're doing some of the other buildings in the loop, you come with a really fresh approach that is knowledgeable about the neighborhood, but it's fresh to the building. Um, you know, the other thing I was going to say, go ahead. No, no, oh, I didn't want to well, lecture. Go. <laughs> well, sometimes you get an agent who, as you said, they know all about the building, but they don't know outside the building. And you right. and I both work very hard to understand the marketplace. So when we take a listing, we understand that building in light of the marketplace, the pros and cons. So for example, a particular building, we might have a listing in and we go through the same steps with that building as we do everything else, but we understand it in context. Like this building is better than the next building because it has better views the amenities are better it's better staffed better run uh it's a better value on the assessments uh the price per square foot for an, a lake view is better you know uh maybe it's not been upgraded but the quality of the building maybe it's a four pipe system versus you know something else so um if you really understand the marketplace in total you can really put that property in context and, and bring it to light. Yes, and, and if you're rep, um, and also that kind of context really helps buyers when you're representing buyers. To go to the neighborhood buyer um, broker for buyers, if you're a buyer, oh. you'll sometimes just get put in a building that's their preference rather right. than looking at the full context of what's going on in, in that neighborhood. Maybe there's something you value that the top building doesn't provide, but another building, which is, is very good, does provide. And right. so that familiarity and not a bias towards one or another is a good thing. Absolutely um, right. You know, I've been on listing appointments where somebody said to me, well, you know, you don't sell the most in this neighborhood. And XYZ agent told me they've got this Rolodex, well, that's an old term, they have this yeah. database with all these people who they're going to send this out and, and this other agents made these people believe that, oh, I've got 50 people in my back pocket. And that is smoke, hello, they're blowing smoke. You know what? Right. And here's the thing, if they have all these people in their back pocket, then they're doing dual agency, which is something I don't subscribe to, which is not in the seller's best interest anyway. So sellers, if you know, Think about this a minute. The agent that says to you, oh, I've got all these people in my back pocket, really look behind that comment because that really does not serve you. I would say, I don't know what the figure is now, like 80%, 85% of the people see a property online before they ever walk into it. Everybody's finding their property online or through the MLS. They're not finding it by the listing agent calling them up, right? They are not. Um and that was you know a big point with all of the information that is available today we can find almost anywhere in the city um information that will make representing a buyer very effective and uh, and make us very effective at selling a place now i personally have chosen the north side of chicago for my area just because it's, the city is way too big to mm -hmm. um, stay up to date on all of the the neighborhoods. But um, but uh, you know if I if I had if I had buyers who wanted to go to Beverly, I could be very effective at helping them find it because I would study up, do the work, talk to the right. other brokers who work in that area. So we we can get you. What you really need is somebody who one does the work, be has your trust and see is somebody who has the connections to bring all of the um, needs of buying and selling to you. And, and we at Baird and Warner have that. So anyway. But, right. And, and okay, I want to make one more last comment about the neighborhood right. broker. And that is, there are a few brokers in this city 
and this is one of these pro tip dirty little secret things that almost bully oh. sellers into thinking that if they don't list with them, they are going to hurt themselves. They won't get the property sold at the highest price. They're the only agent they should list with. And I've had people come to me and say, I don't know what to do. I feel really bad. This person keeps hounding me, hounding me. And okay, so if if you're being, I don't want to say bullied, but if you feel uncomfortable because an agent says to you, you really need to list with me or you're not going to be able to sell, then you know what? Come to me and I'll help you deal with that. Because what you can say, you know, I can help you. I can even make, and I've done this before where I've made the call for my client and said, X, Y, Z agent, so-and-so is signing a listing agreement with me today. And they were uncomfortable and they asked me to make the call on their behalf to say that they have made this decision and uh, thank you for your help, but we're moving on. Um, and just, it breaks my heart that there are people out there that feel that uncomfortable about a selling a home that is so important and so big a part of their investment portfolio, you should never be made to feel badly about your decision on who to work with. You should net, you know, you should always feel good about the process and feel like you're working with an agent who's competent, trustworthy, as Kyle said, and has your back. And if you have any problems, talk to us and we'll help you problem solve and figure it out. And we'll make the call for you if that's what it takes. And to be fair, the, the problem people are few. Yes. Most agents, and I have been delighted by this because I'm, you know, only been in the business now five or so years, but um, I have very rarely run into troublesome people. So we're giving you the pro tips on how to change if you want to change and how, who to use if you want to use. But I've been really impressed by how professional people are generally. So, yeah. good. All right. So those are our two tips today. We're almost done. So should we run through some uh, fun Absolutely. properties? Absolutely. Let's do some pretty, pro product. pretty, pretty pro product. Pretty product. Pretty okay, product. Yeah. You want to go first? Sure. Just because I've got, um, hold on, let's see. Share a screen. Which one? I want to share. Moving it over here. Hold on. There we go. Share. Can you see it? Yes. Good. So I gave you, I, we decided to give you two things that are, uh, or I decided to give you two things that are new to the market that look fantastic. So, you know, we've talked a bit before about Nine Walton. This unit 903 is available. Right now it's available for the, for 4.3 million. And you'll see that you know, the HOA of 2000 is not a lot for a $4 million apartment. The taxes are significant at $66,000 a year, but it's three beds, three baths. But you know what? Again, 66 is like one and a half percent of value. You know, yep. that's not terrible. No, it's not terrible. Um, and considering that, that the person who's going to pay 4.3 million can pay 66,000 a year. Right. Um, but it's a it's a good size three uh, a little over three thousand square feet, and it's got this beautiful terrace. It's a high amenity building, and it's a unit that's growing in value. One of the things that Ann and I have told you is that um, Nine Walton is one of the few buildings where the you know it was a new building just a few years ago, and the resales keep growing in value. They have not dropped. No one is losing money at Nine Walton. So here is. The example, they it's a great room style um, unit, as, as all of the units are at Nine Walton. So, you know, you've got the den, the kitchen, the dining, the living room all together. And you see the big, beautiful balcony. Um, it's a West View. It's a, excuse me, a North and West View unit. So lots of urban views, but really sort of, I think it's pretty. That's the back of a church that is on um, Dearborn that you see outside that window. This is the main bedroom and the main bedroom has um, a view of the church and not, and I didn't show you the other two bedrooms, which look, which is my problem with Nine Walton. They look into two West Delaware, um, which is about, you know, 50 feet away. So, you know, but for gosh sakes, you're gonna be in the main bedroom. 
you know, enjoy it. Here's the main bath, <laughs> what a pretty view. No one's gonna yeah. look in at you. You don't even need blinds. How beautiful is that? And then this terrace. The heated terrace, that's gorgeous. Look at that, you can see the heater at the top. Very nice, very nice. And there's room in the back for a table. I'd spend all my time out there. The second one I'm showing you is um, if you like vintage. So this is the other, um, you know, Nine Walton, a, a beautiful vintage apartment in Streeterville, 230 East Delaware, Unit 7 West. It's a much lower um, entry point, 1.4 million. The HOA is about the same because it's an older building. Um, the taxes are 19,000, almost 20,000 a year. It's three beds, three baths, a little smaller. And it's a it's a very low amenity building, but it has a shared garden, and I'll show you the I'll show you the picture of that. So look at this pretty pretty um, living room and a huge living room actually, because you know it's got it could have three seating areas. They're only showing two, um, but it's a like Nine Walton. It's a city view, and here's the other view <clears throat> towards the dining room. Beautiful traditional kitchen, um, clothes Lovely. off, but how nice is that window in a kitchen? Mm -hmm. huh? And the and the fireplace um, door being um, glass is beautiful and a butler's pantry, who doesn't oh, love, love that? Yeah, pretty. very pretty. Main bedroom is a very good size. And look at that shared garden. How oh, pretty yeah, is that one of the last ones in the loop? I mean, in, the, mm -hmm. in Streeter Hill. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So that's what I got for you. Um, and now I'm going to unstop sharing. Okay, and so I'm gonna show you what I've brought to bear today. Let's see, here we go. All right, so give me one second to pull it up on my end. Here we go. This is Richelieu Flats. This is the building right next door to my building. And this is the fifth floor. This is a unit that is, it takes up the entire floor. Ooh. So here you are getting off the elevator into your vestibule. Mm -hmm. Oh, There's your living room. Isn't that lovely? Lovely. Big What's the price? open space. Um, let me pull up my detail sheet here. This is priced. Okay. So listen to this. This is a million two, two, five. It is. Uh, 2,650 square feet overlooking Grant Park for a million two. It's a three bedroom, three and a half bath, including two parking. Oh, well, not including, parking's extra. But in this, you drive up to your parking space, come out and walk right into your unit, which is so cool. And there's Wait, your view. Their parking's on the fifth floor, so they walk into their unit from their parking? Yes. Isn't that awesome? Wow. Okay. I just think it's a pretty. pretty unit. And look at that kitchen. Look at those floors. Woo. For a million two in the loop. I think this is, we were talking about loop values. I think this is a real value and it's a lovely property. Oh my two God. Two bedrooms have views, pretty bathrooms. Perfect bath. Yeah. So that's that. And now I'm going to share with you one more. How about that view? Huh? I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, this is from 340 Randolph looking south. Uh, this is Maggie Daly Park, Pritzker and Grant Park. And that is the view kind of to the southeast of the lakefront. How big is this unit? Okay. I don't remember things. I need my cheat sheets. Okay, so this one is priced at 2275000 2,354 square feet, and the assessments are only 1,244 a month. Taxes are 36,000 per year. Kitchen, very sleek open kitchen. They've upgraded the kitchen, looks great. Yeah, it does, doesn't that look lovely? The amenities in this building are so nice. Okay, not a fan of the wall color, but that is like the easiest, cheapest. Okay, for $10, we can change that. But look out the bathroom. You and I are both showing bathroom views today. Here's the aqua, 
and north, but you're, you know, you're not looking at anybody. I thought yeah. that was very fun. And here's the terrace for this unit. Oh, isn't that great? And because it's cut into the building, um, the winds yeah. that Chicago has in the spring and the fall, you won't feel them because you're protected. Exactly right. So you back here is the living room shot again, where you can see uh, you have, what do you call that? Uh, 180 degree views of yeah. the city. Yeah. So I love, love, love that. Um, I want to share one more thing with you quick before we go. And that is Okay. I just want to talk to you a second. We don't often talk about our business that's going on. And Kyle's working on a really big deal right now that she can't talk about uh, a home over $3 million. So while she can't talk and her lips are zipped, I'm going to take advantage and talk about this. This is my house on Belden that was listed for a week and sold at $2.4 million. Very excited to have that sale. I wanted to show you, because Kyle and I talk about this all the time. I just mentioned to you that $295,000, 1,000 square foot condo that I think is such a wonderful, wonderful investment. This is it. So it's a thousand square foot loft. It's a sexy brick and timber at 525 North Halstead, which, you know, that area coming up Milwaukee and Grand and just north of Fulton, that is hopping. So to be able to get this for 295 right now is a fantastic deal. It's an investor who's ready to sell. Somebody needs to jump on this. But anyway, you see how pretty this looks? Mm -hmm. That was virtual staging. Love it. So there you go. It shows what that's you can That's what it looks like if you walk in today. Yep. But at a two ninety five price point, it didn't make sense for him to pay for staging and bring furniture in. So I just wanted to show you. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. And there you go there. And there, there's the same view. Uh -huh. And then the bedroom. Isn't that cute? Very cute. Very, very cute. And then, oh, sold six North Michigan in the loop. You saw those pictures last week. And then finally, this is coming up. So anybody watching who's looking for a single family home, this is right kind of where Uptown Ravenswood and Andersonville come together. Technically, this is Andersonville. Uh, it's going to be on the market for around 800000 Cute, cute, cute house. So uh, within two, three weeks, that'll be on the market. So I wanted wait, to share wait, that wait. with you. If you're watching and want a house, call Ann Rossley now. Call me right now, right before it comes on, because it's going to sell fast. It's going to sell in a minute and a half. Oh, yeah. beautiful. So anyway, that's it. We're busy. We're hopping. We're sh going, going, going. All righty. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, thank you for joining us today. And next week, we'll have more insider tips, more interesting properties, more information about what you can do to be successful in this market. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Kyle. Good seeing you. We'll see you next week.